superpowers have become extremely popular lately in media. Well, to be honest, they've always been popular. I mean, who doesn't want superpowers? But thanks to Marvel making so much money, and special effects having come a long way, there are more superpower characters in TV and films than ever before. And the powers look amazing, and we'd all love to have them. But if there's one thing Hollywood does well, it's lie. Films and TV are a fantasy, so they're supposed to be awesome. But real life, however, is rarely as good. And this video is going to take a look at some of the superpowers and show that in real life, there would be some serious issue with these powers that the media just glosses over. Now, this video isn't designed to hate on superpowers or on the films and TV shows where they're used. I have no problem with a little artistic license here and there. This video is just a little reality check on the superpowers for a little bit of harmless fun. Ice powers. Now, I won't say that this is one of the cooler powers because Arnold Schwarzenegger pretty much killed ice puns when he played Mr. Freeze. But it is an impressive power as hot and cold are two of the most powerful forces in our universe. In fact, life couldn't exist without these forces. But it has its limits and freezing a person alive like this is one of them. It's physically impossible to actually freeze people like this. In reality, freezing a human being's body solid takes hours. Even at absolute zero, the lowest temperature that there is, it is impossible. In fact, in order to freeze someone solid so quickly and coat them in ice like this, well, you'd have to have a temperature that is roughly 13,000 times colder than absolute zero, which is impossible. And for people thinking I'm just picking a random number there, that's actually been worked out by some nerd somewhere that that's how cold it would have to be. And it's completely impossible. But it's not the only problem with ice powers. Now, it's generally agreed that whenever there isn't a body of water nearby, like a lake or swimming pool, then ice-powered people use the water in the atmosphere, or the water in their bodies, to create ice. But there isn't actually enough water in the atmosphere to create this much ice. Such as in My Hero Academia, where Shoto Todoroki creates a giant iceberg in an instant. Now, even if he could create a temperature low enough to freeze water this quickly, he'd need more than an Olympic-sized swimming pool's worth of water to create this much ice, as there just isn't enough water in the atmosphere to possibly make this much ice. And he couldn't have that much water in his body because, well, just look at the size of it. He could still make ice out of water in the air, sure, just not this ridiculous amount of ice. You know, the amount that ice-powered people normally create in media whenever they feel like it. And of course, if there was this sudden change in temperature, there would be huge knock-on effects. But I'm not going to go into that because I don't want to spend this whole video on ice powers. Though I do also have to say that this ice wouldn't last for very long, as it would instantly start to melt, and melt quickly depending on the temperature. Healing factors. Now, this is actually the superpower that I want the most, and I'd say it's actually the best superpower there is. But still, there is a few problems with it. You see, energy cannot be destroyed and it cannot be created. It can only change form. This is one of the laws of physics. And in this case, it means that although a person could heal rapidly, the mass would still have to come from somewhere. All that skin and muscle they're growing, well, you need nutrients to make it. So healing a small wound is no problem, as we all have enough nutrients to do that. But regrowing a limb? Well, that takes a lot of resources. And constantly being stabbed and shot like Wolverine and Deadpool is impossible to survive, as healing factors can still be overwhelmed as the actual healing itself would drain their body so much of nutrients that they collapse from exhaustion and likely die. They're not immortal after all, they just heal really quickly. And if you empty enough bullets into them, they can die just like the rest of us. And at one point, Wolverine has actually had to regenerate his entire body, minus the bones. Now this is impossible, as the cells can't be made out of thin air. They have to be made out of something. I mean, this is the reason we eat food, so we can keep growing new cells. The only way this healing would work is if their bodies stored excess nutrients or if they were able to draw power from somewhere else, perhaps using magic or some other energy source from another dimension. Or maybe if they had enough IVs plugged into them that they were getting enough nutrients constantly, then yes, maybe they could completely regenerate. But they couldn't continuously regenerate their flesh in the field as the injuries are occurring, because they don't have enough nutrients in their body. So this power just doesn't work as advertised. Though, to be fair, in the Deadpool films, his limbs do take longer to regenerate than in the comics. I mean, a couple of days to regrow your legs is still insanely quick, and you'd have to constantly be eating day and night to do this, and even then it would be difficult. But still, this is a bit more realistic than the comics, where he can regrow his fingers or other limbs in just a few minutes. And another problem with healing factors is hair. 
Whenever a person loses their hair, either they're injured in their head or burnt alive or something, their hair and beards always grow back to the exact same length as before. Whereas in reality, they would heal, but their hair wouldn't regrow. Not unless they're preserved in the exact state, like a vampire who dies with a certain haircut and always regenerates to that haircut. But since they can grow their hair longer or get a haircut, it just makes no sense. I mean, when you think about it, if their hair always regrows to the same length, then every time they got a haircut, it would just grow back instantly. And they'd never be able to cut their hair shorter or into another style at all, which would be insanely annoying. Now, I do know that this is just the creators taking an artistic license so the characters look good, and it's only a minor problem. But still, it's a problem nonetheless. Wings. Now, birds fly using their wings. We all know this. And so it makes sense that humans with wings could fly as well, which is why angels and gods in mythology have wings. And some superheroes and villains have wings that allow them to fly as well. Now, the problem with this is that a human body is too heavy and our bones and muscle structure are too dense to fly with wings this small. In order for a human to fly with wings, the wingspan would have to be significantly bigger to create enough force to lift a person off the ground. Seriously, the wingspan to fly for a human would have to be about 20 to 30 feet across, at least. After all, if you just look at the size of a hang glider compared to a person, it is huge. And all that does is allow a person to glide. So obviously flight would require much more thrust and a much larger wing size than the glider has. Whereas Angel from the X-Men has wings a lot smaller and a lot of the other villains and heroes in media have even smaller wings. Now to be fair, if a person's body is less heavy than the average person and it is possible that some of these people have hollow bones just as birds do and that allows them to fly, well then they might be able to do it. But a normal human would not be able to fly with these wings. And since most heroes and villains are over six feet tall and made of muscle, well, they're going to have a pretty hard time flying. Now, to be fair, when it comes to anime, where the creatures have smaller wings, and I mean a lot smaller, they normally have magical powers. So it could be argued that it's magic that lets them fly. And if it is, fair enough, that does make sense. But without some outside power source to keep people in the air, then in the real world, these wings would be next to useless on a person. Super Strength now, I have mentioned super strength before, but there are a lot of limitations to this extremely popular ability. One of which is that a person needs to have enhanced endurance or invulnerability in order to use super strength. Otherwise, whenever they throw too powerful a punch, they break their own body in half. This is actually demonstrated very well in My Hero Academia, where Midoriya's body breaks apart and his bones break or shatter when he uses his powers at his full strength. And this would happen to anyone using this much power unless their body was enhanced as well. Now, the reason for this is because whenever you hit or kick something, then the force you use does hit the object, but it also gets rebounded back at you. It's why when we push down, we're able to jump up in the air, because the force goes down, but it also pushes against our body as well. So if you punch something with, say, a million newtons worth of force and get that force hit back at you, well, it would be painful. It would basically be the same as getting run over by a car going about 60 miles an hour. And speaking of jumping, if a person were to perform a super jump, if they were tough enough, they might be fine. But the ground around them would not be, as the amount of force you'd need to launch yourself this high into the air would absolutely destroy the ground that you were standing on. And if you jumped off of a building, then the whole building would likely collapse. And of course, the other problem with a super jump is surviving the landing. Again, without some form of enhanced endurance, you die, or most likely break half the bones in your body. But even with that, if you landed on a car or a building, then you would destroy whatever you land on. Even if you were landing on solid concrete, you'd still create a smashing hole in the ground. And even when you're jumping in the air, there are still problems. I mean, if you misjudge the jump and you don't see something in the air, you could easily hit an aeroplane or helicopter, or even get launched into orbit if you jump up too high. And of course, the higher you go up, the less oxygen there is. And it also gets extremely cold, and even the invulnerable need to breathe. Well, usually they do. The Hulk can famously do super jumps, but really, he'd suffocate without oxygen and pass out, likely turning into Banner again, and then dying from the landing. So his super jumps couldn't go too high, otherwise they'd have these problems. And these are just a few of the problems with super strength that are overlooked in films and shows. Believe me, there are a lot more. Magnetism. Now, I have mentioned this power before as well. But due to a lot of comments on the issue, I decided to go over all the metals that work with this power and the ones that don't. 
because I was very brief with it when I mentioned it the first time. Now having the power to control magnetic fields means that you can control metals that are magnetic. But in most media, especially the live action X-Men films, people with magnet powers can just basically control all metals that there are. But in reality, there are actually only a few metals that are magnetic. And these metals are iron, nickel, and cobalt. A lot of alloys can be magnetic as well, but only the ones that contain at least one of these three metals. For example, steel is magnetic, but that's only because it's mainly made out of iron. But there are a lot of non-magnetic metals out there, such as aluminium, lead, copper, tin, titanium, zinc, gold, silver, platinum, and alloys like brass and bronze. And because of the fact that these are non-magnetic metals, that means magnetic people can't control them. And these non-magnetic metals are actually the ones that we build most stuff out of, because it's the very thing that makes them non-magnetic that usually makes them great for building components. So although this is a great power and it has some truly amazing uses, it's not like it is in the films and shows, as these people can't control most metals. And to be completely honest, the best way to use magnetism powers would actually be just to carry a lot of iron, nickel or cobalt with you at all times. Then you could move and morph them how you want. So you could use it to fly, make a bullet shield, and use it like telekinesis to move any object around you, basically just having metal hands that can move autonomously from your body. If you actually did it this way, it would actually be an incredibly useful power. Though this is almost never done in media, but in real life, it's really the only way that you could use magnetism powers to mimic what they do in films. And if you did use it like this, it would be a great power and insanely useful. And that is me destroying all of your childhoods and fantasies by letting you know that superpowers aren't all they're cracked up to be. And of course, feel free to hate on me in the comments. And if there are any other flaws with these powers that you can think of, then please let us know them as well. And just let us say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.